Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Adrian. Well, this week we're talking about, we're basically just going to do part two of last week's topic, which was ideas that must matter. Basically, we took on the ideas that if eliminated would improve our lives. Ideas that we took on last week were fast food, career ladder, degrees, ownership, banks, needing all the resources in the world to survive, advertising, and the cost of travel. So in this week, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but let's let's go for it, man. So what do we have? <laughs> um, first on the list is waiting. That's one of your suggestions. Okay, so waiting. Well, <laughs> the idea of waiting here is basically, um, you know, waiting for stuff. Like, I, I think we wait too much. <laughs> uh, or at least in my, in my case, I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, you know, very impatient. <laughs> I don't like waiting. I, I mean, I understand waiting, but I think there's many things for which we wait too much that we don't really have to. So, you, I mean, you can go by industry and say, you know, this this industry sucks because people just wait too much for certain things. Now, for example, uh, traveling. Is it, is it, I mean, how much time do you spend at an airport waiting to leave? <laughs> hours. Hours, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hours. And, I mean, I don't I don't travel that much, but... I know it's, when I travel, it's, you know, spending hours at the fucking airport. <laughs> now imagine all the people who have to travel, you know, who travel every month. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, and even if, if you live in a crowded city like L.A. or New York, yeah. you wait a lot in traffic. Yeah. Just every day, like one hour, two hours just to get to work. Yeah, yeah. Mexico City, I mean, Mexico City's traffic is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Is ridiculous. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of bunch of um, examples of industries that really, um, you know, make people wait a lot. I mean, they're they're just not super optimized. Um, just huge, huge, um, you know, providers of stress for people. So really, that's that's really the idea. Of what I was thinking about waiting. You know, um, now what's going to change or what could change that? Um, so there's a lot of stuff online right now in line, I should say, that will probably, you know, help out with that. I don't think waiting per se as the idea is going to ever going to end. Uh, but you, we can, you know, change things to, you know, to eliminate so much of, you know, some of that, uh, you know, time that we spend waiting for stuff. Um, you know, for example, if, if we, well, going back to your traffic example, um, you know, will driverless cars eliminate waiting? <laughs> will they eliminate traffic? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't. I don't really think that's going to change, uh, because cars are going to exist still. If we don't change the roads, <laughs> if we don't change the way you know, you know, transportation is done, then you know, waiting is not is going to be an issue. Um, no, but I mean, if if let's say Google puts out their driverless cars, they might not put out. Two million cars in LA. They might put out um, yeah two hundred thousand, and you're forced to, or not even forced to, but you're like, okay, so I want a car. Well, odds are that somebody else is gonna be in that car with you, sharing the ride. Yeah. So yeah. So there's yeah. yeah, and also like the parking, which I think is the biggest, the biggest, and especially in in big cities like LA, New York, and um, you know bigger, bigger cities where people have to park. I think that's gonna be eliminated. The parking. Um, what will happen with all the parking? Because there's a lot of parking spaces right now. Parking lots. Yeah. We we could eliminate those. Yeah. More real estate. Well that's that's one of the ideas the ideas they're they're pitching in terms of the driverless cars is the idea that if there's less cars or less people on, on the road, then you have spaces, you know, we would traditionally be parking spaces for, you know, spaces like for, for a park, um, you know. For stuff you know, people 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 to sit at, you know, stuff like that. More housing. Or, or, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> in a city like Kelly and New York, you need more housing. You need more housing. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I actually think housing, housing will probably be done elsewhere, not in the city. <laughs> so, sit. I mean, if if I don't think cities need more <laughs> more housing, um, you know, the cost of living in the in the city is 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 just skyrocketing right now. So, I mean, that's. I mean, if anybody builds a, a housing, you know, complex or, or you know has a, a you know project to do that, and then. You know, they, they have to have a very, very specific bill proposition in terms of, you know, why, why that's, that's a better, better alternative to, uh, you know, to park, to park. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, if, if they're going to maintain the same skyrocketing prices for a, you know, to put more housing, I mean, that's, I would think that's really stupid. Somebody just go in there to live this, to spend, pay more money. But, uh, but if they go out, if they go and live outside the city, it's going to be like, one hour, one hour, or forty-five minutes, just to commute. Yeah. Well, see, here's the thing, because this is this is. I mean, they're anticipating this. If you know, you've heard of um, Elon Musk Hyperloop. No, I've heard of him, but not that. Okay. So the basic, basically, it's what what he's proposing, or he proposed, and now two companies were created to to execute that idea. Is basically um, a it's the fifth form of transportation. So basically, it's like a high um, high speed. Um, kind of like a train, but it moves through air, through a vacuum. And basically you'll, I mean, uh, a ride from LA to San Francisco would be like a, what, like an hour? Because the thing travels like, like 700 miles per hour. <laughs> so that's the idea. And they're, 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 they're experimenting with it. And I know they're, they're, they're building a track in, in, in Las Vegas as we speak. So is that going to be the first case study? We don't know, but they are trying. So that's going to move. How 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 fast that is going to take? Well, I'm not probably going to probably going to see it in three years, but um, you know. So so this is this is very anticipatory because if you have the tra type of transportation, <laughs> then commuting from one place to the other is going to be very, very easy. <laughs> but even the thought of commuting, why why do we need to commute? Why do we need to go? To yeah. <laughs> see, this is the other thing. Because like we were saying, I would think two, two or three podcasts ago, we were talking about like the future of work and how, um, you know, remote, remote uh, work is kind of like, like an even, even for me, at the very least. I mean, I rarely go to an office <laughs> if I don't need to. I mean, there's a lot of people who still need to see each other, <laughs> to, to, you know, to see face to face. I like that, I, I'd like that to change, but, you know, people are stubborn in that way. They like the, you know... <laughs> To, get, to interact with people face to face, and sure, sure, it's needed, but um, you know, so <laughs> I mean, I don't think I don't think uh, the need for people to to see each other is gonna. I mean, I've, I've I've done my own experimentation with this, and it's really really hard to get some people to jump off the idea that you know, I like to go. But I mean, you're talking about humans. you're talking about uh, creative people or freelancers. But well, everybody. What about all the, for example, the people who work at a the people who work at the factories, they need to go there. They they have to be present. Yeah. So what about them? Because most of well, them, they, they... Well, what happens when robots take over their jobs? <laughs> exactly. Because most of those jobs are going to disappear. Yeah. They already are. And then what's going to happen to people? But we already discussed that on yeah. another... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, so that kind of goes with the idea of waiting, but... Um, I do think there are a lot of things that we could, we can improve. I mean, so so I'll give you an example of um, a project that I'm working on. It has to do. I I did tell you about it. It has to do with the waiting. Wait when you, you well you have a, you you have your, your child is six years old, so you go to pick her up to the school. Well, no, because your 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 uh, wife works there, but uh, so you don't have to go through that. But there's other parents who gotta go pick up their kids, and I don't know how much time they spend in the car waiting for the kids to come out. But when I remember when I was a kid, it wasn't that fast. <laughs> so that that process never changed. So what we're trying to do is fix that. Uh, how? Well, I can't say right now. <laughs> but uh, I can I can talk about that probably like in a month or, or two. But basically, that's that's like a problem of waiting. You know, that's never been questioned. You know, why do I have to wait for my kid when I pick him up from school? Whatever the time it is, maybe half an hour, whatever. But um, we think we can we can 
not eliminate that weighing completely, but we can do something about it. But for example, I was talking with my wife about the idea, and I told her it would be good if we implemented it at, at the school you work at, and she was like, no, why? Because they already have, and I don't know how much I could say about your project, but they already have uh, a system where, I mean, in all the schools, it's going to be a one line. You have one line of yeah. cards. So making that faster, it's going to maybe start saving you a few seconds the way you want to do it. But at uh, the school my wife works at, they already have a system similar but analog. <laughs> Okay. Like, yeah. like, 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 like pencil and paper. <laughs> yeah. So, so they know, they know, uh, what kit comes next mm. and down a few cars because yeah. they have someone going up and down with a walkie talkie, blah, 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 blah. So they always have the kit yeah. like ready to go. But some schools wait till you get, till you get there. Till yeah. You, yeah. To go get, to get the, the signal to get, get the kit. So. Yeah. In, in, in the school my wife works, uh, maybe your 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 project doesn't um, speed things up. Maybe it's... Actually, yeah. So basically the way we're framing it is how can we make, um, you know, picking up your school of kids fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's that's really how we're framing it. Okay. Not in terms of speed. Okay. Because we know you're going to have to wait. I mean, unless your kid disappears like, like in Star Trek and appears at your house... We're a long ways from that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know the basic the basic uh, process of going to pick up your kid. I mean that's going exi to that's going to exist. But how do we make that fun and at the same time eliminate some of the waiting? So maybe it's a perceptual thing. How we're trying to figure that out. So how do we make you perceive the waiting less, but at the same time making it fun? So you you get there as a you know with a big fucking smile on your face, and your kid also comes, you know comes to you. With a big smile on their face, and they're motivated to, you know, participate in this this um, this it, process. It's not so much a chore now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I gotta go pick him up and wait there. Yeah, exactly. So that's really what we're trying to like like change the perception of the thing because the waiting we're not gonna eliminate. I mean, that's <laughs> it could be eliminated if you if you implement new things, but that's like telling them, you know what, instead yeah. of one lane, you need three lanes. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like Super that. Super specific school. Yeah. You know. Infrastructure thing. because it's it's uh, there's a one school here in Tijuana that that it just goes crazy. They don't have any kind of system. They just they let just the kid let, let whatever whoever arrives. Let them. let the kids go out, wait at the entrance, and everyone picks them up or <laughs> they the close kids the doors go, behind. Or, and yeah, they close the doors behind them. Yeah, that was really good. and the traffic that gets there. Oh my god, it's so crazy, it's so <laughs> freaking crazy. And like most of them, because they're like rich kids. Some of them have like a car at age fourteen, stuff mm. like that. So they just they just drive their friends. Oh or go. <laughs> it's just crazy. But yeah. Um, well, that was that was one idea. So should we shift to this next one? Yeah, this is a right. fun one. All right. So the next idea, the next idea that should die is uh, we were trying to find a, a way to frame this, but I think the, you you came up with it wishful thinking. Yeah. I was I was saying you know like this whole concept of positivity. <laughs> yeah. So basically, but it, I was like, I'm positive. I, I don't yeah, know we're positive. Yeah, we're, we're positive. Yeah, we're positive. We're positive. Hell is positive. But then some people see us as being, you know, unpositive because we're critical of stuff. We're just exactly. we're picking things apart. But the thing is that, um, so how's a good way to put this? Basically, it's what we're what we're saying. This should die is not the people, but more the concept of of people wishing things and not doing shit. <laughs> I think, and maybe people will hate on me for this, but it's it kind of like a it goes hand with hand uh, with uh, religion. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, the same fucking thing. Waiting for for a god to give you stuff just because you're good to him. <laughs> that, I mean, that that's wishful thinking. Yeah. So being positive and being like like the the secret that was supposedly you. I don't know, everyone knows. You wish is, things and you visualize yeah, it and then yeah. it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's bullshit. That's complete yeah. bullshit. I don't know anyone who became a millionaire after reading that book and wanting it. And I don't know anyone's life changed after reading that book. And I know a lot of people who wrote the, who read the book and watched the movie. There was a movie too, yeah. right? And their lives didn't change. They just became more positive, but that's about it. The, yeah. See, and see, see, and that's, I think that's the... See, I have nothing against people who who 
who uh, you know advocate for for happiness. I have nothing against that. What I have a problem with is not understanding what you're saying. <laughs> you know what you're advocating for. If you're advocating just for a positive attitude, I mean, <laughs> there's million, there's various ways to do that. But you're if you're advocating to brainwash somebody into thinking and, and not your and, and not doing, you know, not taking taking action on that, that's ridiculous. Because if you're just somebody who just has a positive attitude but does not act. And then the other side is um, nothing is ever a straight line. <laughs> so there's going to be ups and downs. Yeah. And I always tell people who are, you know, uh, too much overly positive that I say, let me put you in a situation where you have to drag your feet. <laughs> right? How are you going to react to that? Right? And that's always a test. And that... because they're not used to used to, these most of these people they will not go through stressful situations. That's the reason they're supposedly happy because they avoid stressful situations, which is to me it's it's ridiculous. Because anything worth doing is going to be is going to test you, right? <laughs> it's going to be is going to put you out of your comfort zone. So <laughs> that's what I have against all this stuff. The wishful thinking is is not, you know, avoiding <laughs> being stressful. You really you're not but becoming you... any better by just being positive. But not actually going and. <laughs> I think that if you're very positive, you can't be. You can't become an athlete just be thinking about it. <laughs> of course not. You gotta put <laughs> you, in the, the. You can't be an entrepreneur just by saying, "Oh, I am we're, one. We're, we're gonna make it. <laughs> we're gonna make what?" <laughs> it's, it's it's very um, it's crazy. You don't go to Bill Gates and tell him, "Hey, I want to save the world just like you." Sure. What do you got? And what are you doing about it? No, I just, I just want to do, I just, I just, I, just, like, I just want to say it's a good idea. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, that, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's, <laughs> it's and a, it's everywhere. It's, uh, I think if you're positive, it helps when things get tough, and they will, <laughs> but... If it's not your passion, you're just gonna that. Positive, yeah, you're gonna leave it behind. The positive thinking is gonna die completely. You know these um, um, what do you call these things? The multi-level marketing shit. The Ponzi schemes. The, yeah, well, another way to say it. Pyramid but schemes. the the yeah. from my perspective, and I've been pitched this, you know, on and on, is you know I've always looked at this like um, a bunch of wishful thinking people in there. Who follow a template because it's all it takes is to, you know, contaminate somebody with a positive attitude and say, oh, just invite somebody else to it. And then it becomes like this, you know, you know cascade of, 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 of money, right? So I have nothing against the goddamn Ponzi schemes. I mean, the, whatever. I don't do them, but whatever. It works for some people. But if you look at it from a, from a business perspective, you need to get at the beginning to be able to profit from it. Because eventually, there's too many damn people that, you know, <laughs> just runs out of control. Because some people just accept it just for the hell of it, but they don't put in the work. It's the same thing. They say, oh, I'm going to make it, right? Because <laughs> even these things require work. One of my best friends works used to work in one of these things. But he loved talking to people. So it, it went with the thing. He loved that shit, right? <laughs> and, I, and I used to tell him, you know you're brainwashing people, right? <laughs> No, no, I'm trying to, to advocate for positivity and all this shit. I'm like, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> this is not challenging, I said. <laughs> the world doesn't need another Ponzi scheme, <laughs> right? But I think those things, you know, if you, if you connect both ideas, you know, the, the idea that if all I got to do is just invite people to participate in one of these things and then just be positive, you know, then we're all going to be fucking happy, right? Because we're going to have money, we can buy our cars and all this crap. Really, that doesn't last. It lasts maybe a couple, really? of, a couple of months and that's, you know, the, the feeling lasts a couple of months. But as I always tell these people, what happens if I take all that away from you and I make you drag your feet? How will you respond? What did you learn? Your, your attitude is probably going to change <laughs> because you've never been up against something like this, something that challenges you. <laughs> a, a friend told me uh, like two weeks ago that, I don't know who he was talking to, but It made a lot of sense to me when he told me. He said, a lot of people nowadays are like, I need this thing to be happy to do this. So I need 
I, yeah. I, I need, no, I want, I get, and I am. And he was like, and someone told me it's the other way around. First, you have to be, yeah. in this case, be happy. Then you'll get, and then you'll, you'll no, then you do, and then you'll get. So it, it was the other way. And I, I was like, yeah, exactly. That, that's how I'm living my life right now. It's, it's, the first thing you need to do is, is, first of all, be grateful for, for what you have, even if it's not what you want. Because that makes you happy. And if you're happy, you're going to be positive. If you're positive, you're going to have that positive thinking when shit gets rough. And you need that because if, if you don't have a passion, yep. you're, you're going to leave it all behind. And, and I just read recently, thanks to you, um, Elon Musk's wife, she, she said that... She gets it. <laughs> she she gets said it. That, that passion is not something that makes you happy 24-7. Yeah. It's, it's what you're willing to put yourself through. Yeah, it's and suffer what, for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what you're willing to sacrifice for. And I was like, wow, that, that that's that's exactly it. That's because what it is. because my 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 ride or my voyage with my film, it's not making me happy at all. But why am I still doing it? Because I'm I like it. I mean, it's I want to do it. Something inside of me is telling me, you know what? Yeah. Th this is this is fun. It's not happy because I. I there's a lot of work to do still and I don't know I can't see like the end of it but still I'm, I'm it's fun it's fun I like it I want to keep doing it what what other thing could I do could I be doing right now a nine to five job uh-uh <laughs> working for someone else uh-uh no I, <laughs> I just want to keep making movies and figure out how to make yeah money out of it I think I think all the wishful thinking people are just basically uh you know they want it easy They, they don't want to, you know, go through the troubles or the, the pain and all that stuff. So Don't even get me started with that. that. That's how it is. I know a lot of people like that. They, yeah. they, They're everywhere. The first thing I do when someone tells me, oh, I want to do this, 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 this. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of like the same thing I want to do. I I try and put them, well, like, now it makes sense. Like you, I, I try and, and, and ask them for something that I know it's going to bother them or... If they really want to do it, they'll do it. If not, they're not going to do it. And most of the time, well, not most, not all the time, they they don't do it. They don't do. They don't want to do any of the heavy lifting. They just want all the glory and no heavy lifting. And I'm like, forget about it. You know, I don't speak to them ever again. And they don't even look for me. So it's yeah. But yeah, it's it's, it's sad. It's very sad because yep. there's a lot of people who who are like, yeah, I want to do this, and that, and that, and they even get you motivated. Cause, cause but this is ridiculous. But at the End of it's, the day, it's they're just not. Talk. Yeah, it's just talk, just fucking talk, and it's it's sad. Then it's sad. It gets sad because yeah. you're alone. Well, I don't think we. I, I mean, unless we we eliminate um, insecurities and stupidity, maybe we'll we'll eliminate wishful thinking. But <laughs> no, I, I mean, it goes back to everything that we're taught when we're we raised as our, as kids. I mean, it's and that I think that goes into the the. Another one of her topics is simplistic idea of how to survive or yeah. make it. And, yeah. and I think that's part of it because a lot of people are like, no, 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 I can't quit my job or no, I, I need money to survive, blah, blah, blah. You don't need money to survive. You you have a lot of, you can grow your own food yeah. and, and that takes care of that. I mean, I've been thinking about how to take care of everything without using money. And it's very, very possible The the weird thing or the, 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 the par paradox thing about all this is that you need money to not be able to then need money but but yeah i think it's 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 it, it has to do with how we're brought up about what we need to do to survive and i mean i, I figured out uh, a few years ago that if you work you get paid and you're living month to month or maybe two months at a time you're surviving you're not living at yeah. all so i i decided i was not gonna be uh a survivor and I wanted to live and I wanted to enjoy my life yeah um, you know this idea of making it um, <laughs> now we're, we switch to that one um, is is basically I mean what one way to say it is how your parents tell you to you should study a certain degree or a certain major because the world will always need that type of major <laughs> and then therefore You will always have a job, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that's making it, and which I think is stupid. <laughs> yeah, like a 
having a family, like, having a decent job, all this other having a jumbo. house, and that that doesn't work anymore. That <laughs> doesn't work. Uh, like force fitting your ideas. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't I mean, work anymore. Even uh, Bernie Sanders was Samuel Bayester. Uh, Bernie Sanders was talking about that. The it's very expensive to be poor because poor people pay more for groceries. Poor people pay rent so they don't save that money if they own the house. Yeah. So it's it's pretty, pretty, pretty expensive to be to be poor. And and right now it's uh it's very common to rent something instead of buying it. Why would you buy it? Even though it's way cheaper if you buy it with the interest than if you no. Right now it's cheaper if you rent than if you buy in Mexico with the interest. Yeah. Like Either half or almost one fourth cheaper with the interest if you rent yeah. in Mexico. I don't know in the states how that is, but right now it's it's like that's so what no one buys. Everyone rents. Yeah, and in the states it's similar. I think it's um, it's actually like twenty five percent cheaper to buy than it is to rent. Um, but people are not buying because number one, the expectation is. Um, Well, they don't know how much money they're going to make <laughs> in, in the next year. <laughs> right? Exactly. And remember to buy, you have to you have to save up money um to put that that down payment and then you still got to, you know, have some money, maybe six months of money to, you know, in case something happens because I mean, that's how it is, right? So a lot of people are not buying, especially people our age are not buying for that simple reason. But why so, is why is buying a home so complicated now. I mean, it used to be that you got land, you build on it, and you live there for the rest of your fucking life. Yeah. And now it's it's even... It's a, it's a drag. Yeah, buying a house, it's, it's super expensive. I could build a house You right know why? Now. It's because, I think it's because it's become a status status symbol. Yeah. That's why. And, t and usually when things become a um like a status symbol they become more complicated to achieve to to get therefore if you went through the process then you you bet you you probably are somebody important or you know you know you know what i mean but i think it's become a status symbol to to own a house and to to own it somewhere where you know <laughs> yeah so some, somewhere important and somewhere yeah. there, where people can some. see me Somewhere important it's expensive if you go like you were talking about earlier if you go out of town Like one hour from Tijuana, you can buy a. Okay, so here's the thing: in Mexico, it's one um, hectare, mm -hmm. and that's about how many acres for our English audiences? <laughs> I think it's like two or three or something. I like think that. so. Yeah. Yeah. So you can buy that for ten thousand dollars. So it's uh, one dollar per square meter. Mm -hmm. You can buy that and you can build with, let's say, another $10,000. You can build a, a house, a, a nice home. Um, that's $20,000 to build a nice home and have lots of land. But if you want to buy a house here in the city, you're looking at, in a nice area, you're looking at $200,000, $300,000. Yeah. In a place where most of the people make 8,000 pesos to 12,000 pesos a month, Most like, what? And, you, and you know what's also funny? The people who invest in real estate. What do you mean? Yeah, so I mean, investing in real estate is not an old idea, mm -hmm. but it's people that's that's that you know they invest in real estate, they're not going to be bought because people don't even have the money to buy it, <laughs> they're still investing in it. So, like those guys that had a, a billboard that, that your best. Uh, Way to invest this in. Well, for example, life. you know, close to where we live, you know, over here, just over the hill, um, you got all these new housing projects, right? And uh, well, those housing projects were funded usually by by either somebody who has a lot of money or a bunch of people who put down money to to you know to put the you know you know to create the the space for people to buy a house. A house. And, and those homes are always going to be paid for throughout, you know, however many years they have on there. So that's that's how you invest in real estate. You know, you get that that, that kickback money for a long time. Um, and that's still going on. 
And a lot of people can't even afford these damn houses. <laughs> right? Now, in China, what they do is, and people, <laughs> this is ridiculous, because in China, they do, the, they, I mean, they, it's really, really, very, very funny, but the way they, they sell space is basically they create the space first, they put it, and then they get the people. But once they have all the people, they go and put them in the houses. It's, it's different, but they know they're going to fill it. How? I don't have no idea. I've never talked to somebody who works, you know, who lives in China to to know know not enough about. But but that's how they how's that how they do it, <laughs> which wouldn't work here, <laughs> unless it's really really really, you know, cheap. very cheap to, to you know to to get a house. But um, but then we have the the thing that happened a few years ago with all the cheap housing that I think two out of three um, companies who make those cheap housings uh, filed bankruptcy. Oh yeah, yeah. Because most, happen. most of the homes there were like twenty seven thousand homes yeah. abandoned in, in Tijuana because the not paid for yeah. also because they were like crumbling down. Yeah. That's they were falling happen. apart. That's gonna happen. In less than five years. And you're supposedly paying fifteen years for this house because in Mexico it's fifteen years, right? Yeah. You pay fifteen fifteen years for the house. In the five years some houses were abandoned and the others were um, the the government was like you know what you, you need to get out because it's not safe for you to live here yeah um you know a lot of people just live off you know mindless ideas and um status symbols yeah. and, and there's yeah, no bigger yes. status symbol than owning a house i mean you, you, the us the us got people in trouble because they sold the american dream <laughs> which is that which is basically <laughs> That it's right, own a house, get your car and family and your dog and your cat and all that shit. But right, that's not possible. Anymore. It's too, you know, it's impossible. It's a, it's that's, an, impossible. that's an old idea. That's the reason yeah. everything went down in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, <laughs> people were buying houses with they couldn't even pay for. But you know, that's that's mindless for you and status symbol. But um, yeah, so basically, that's that's the idea of of making it. <laughs> the idea of you know whatever that means to each of you. <laughs> what does even making it mean? Having something it's ridiculous, something secure. Yeah, job security. That's ridiculous. But I mean, anything could change. Maybe they, someone could drop an atomic bomb on us, and the whole world changes. And now, yeah. dentists dentists are not as important as yeah. As, I don't know, a, an engineer or yeah. I mean, it's wishful thinking. I mean, you know, you. I mean, we're kind of going back to the, to the other topic, but you know, when I talk to, when I do get to talk to people, or you know, have the patience to do so. Um, with wishful thinking people is basically <laughs> I always put scenarios that make them comfortable, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and, and 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 I end up with the with the you know basically saying, you know, you know, you know people who are, you know, like this um, would basically say I want to live in my own corner of the world where supposedly nothing is going to happen, and you know that that makes them secure. Like I got I got a friend. Which one of my best friends? I remember when we were younger, um, because I was, you know, I always been very kind of like up to date with stuff, what's going on, and all that shit. So I remember, you know, Firefox, the browser. Yeah. So I was number twenty three user of, of Firefox back 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 then. So I told my buddy, oh, listen, look, check out this this new browser. He checked it out and he was like, oh, that's cool. And he's then he still stayed with with uh, Internet Explorer like three or four years more up until one day i remember because we were sharing an office he tells me hey hey this is this this firefox thing is cool and i'm like what because <laughs> i remember what i think it was like firefox firefox 3 <laughs> that was like seven years ago and um he's like yeah i just i just downloaded it da, da, da. and i'm like you fucking daniel are you fucking kidding me <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I just downloaded this thing. I mean, I remember three years ago, I told you. He's like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm like, holy shit. I mean, you know what I mean? So basically what I'm trying to say is that my, my, my buddy Daniel has ideas of wishful thinking. He does stuff. But at the same time, he has ideas of wishful thinking. He's kind of like in the middle. Why? Because I used to t talk to him about, you know, how technology usually overtakes things and then changes industries. And he's like, oh, but that's not going to happen here. I'm like, where? In Mexico. I'm like, I know it's not going to happen here. Eventually it will. Yeah, but he's like, yeah, but you talk about stuff like if it were 
here in Mexico. Why? Well, because you we we you know stuff happens faster elsewhere in the world than here. I'm like, yeah, but eventually it's gonna happen. He's like, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why we don't have to we don't have to do anything. I'm said, well, that's that's the stupidest thing that I've ever heard, because that's the fucking that's not the right attitude to have. <laughs> if you, I mean, let's think about progress, and progress means you know doing stuff that nobody wants to do. <laughs> Like yeah. accelerating progress somewhere and not having to say, oh, we, we, I can survive for another five years before I adopt that technology. <laughs> the, the, there's a guy in Tijuana, an American, of course, taking advantage of that, of the, the thing that we don't get things or technology that fast here. So he has, and he talked to one of her friends and, and he, right now he's selling, um, Websites. He does a website with SEO with yeah. like all the things that are standard in the states. But here, it's like he, new. Uh, yeah, he has. He even had like a fact that was uh, right now. Right now, the the internet, the state of the internet in Mexico is the same as it was 15 years ago yeah. in the states. So that guy like sold him on everything because he made a lot of sense and he also had a book. How can you compete with someone who has a book, you know? At, at the end of the presentation here, take my book. <laughs> so there's people taking advantage of that. Instead of like, oh, we don't have to, to worry about that. People are like, oh, so I can see the future in, in other places and make money off of that here. And that guy is making money off of that here. He's the same guy who has a bit box here in, in, mm -hmm. in Tijuana. Same thing. He got the idea from Redbox and put it in Mexico. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just, I mean, people are making money of seeing the future instead of the other way around, not worrying about it. Yeah, I mean, and that's going to happen. But see, they don't, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, really? <laughs> yeah. It's just how it is, but um, I even think that's mediocrity, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that was the, uh, so wh whatever topic should we should we what other ideas should we eliminate do we have more in there uh yeah we have one more um technology that makes us lazy or mindless efficiency which pretty much i thought of it because i saw the other day i don't even know what what it's called it's that little thing with two wheels you get on it and with your body you move it mm -hmm. and it goes forward and backwards and turns around it's like a what what is it do you know the name the, of yeah well it's these little the cover the not the hoverboards but like the yeah i know what you mean it's like the poor man's hoverboard <laughs> yeah the poor man's <laughs> hoverboard <laughs> yeah they're they're about like 350 dollars or 500 dollars and i i i have no use for them I, I was thinking okay so someone pays 350 dollars for something that makes you lazier you, you you can't use it anywhere in in Tijuana. You can't use it in shopping malls. You can practically only use it um, on the sidewalk. But in Tijuana, yeah. there's no flat sidewalk. So, or you could um, someone's gonna steal it from you, <laughs> and uh, it makes you lazy. You're not walking anymore. The the small steps you used to take. I mean, that could uh, eradicate walking for you completely. Yeah. And there's no use for it. There's no. It's not making your life easier. Um, you're probably gonna use it at your house. Maybe I don't know if it's big enough or not. So, why would you spend three hundred fifty dollars for something that? It's just cool. Yeah, the one we're talking about is the Duck Duck Go. Yeah, Duck Duck Go. Let me see it. Yeah, that's the one. Duck Duck Go. Duck Duck Go. It's really a toy. Yeah, it's a toy and a very expensive toy. But I mean, where where are you gonna use it? It's just a fucking toy, man. It's and and it, 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 my wife saw it and she was like, oh my God, we're getting closer to the future predicted in Wally. We are. We're getting, we are getting closer. There's other things that also, I think there's a, a, a setup you can buy where you can, you can, uh, you have like your computer, your television, everything set up in a chair. Yeah. And you can buy that setup. I don't know where, but I saw it online. So it's, it's, it's amazing what technology can do, but it's also stupid what it can do and what it's used for. And I think that that it doesn't, it shouldn't even be considered doing that kind of uh, getting that kind of technology. I mean, we're if we eradicate walking, we're gonna get fat. 
everyone's gonna get fat, even the people who don't get fat. Yeah. Because you don't. You, how many calories do you think you waste when you like lean forward a little bit? Yeah. Versus walking. <laughs> And I mean, it, it's it's walking is good for you. You're gonna eliminate something that's that good for you, instead of, of and exchange it for what commodity? Yeah, I mean it. You know, the mindless efficiency is, um, you know, going back maybe to even to the topic of waiting. Um, see, like like the like your like the uh, you know the app assistance or the phone assistance that we have, like like Siri and uh, Cortana and Google now. I mean, they're not up to where they should be in terms of um, the expectation that they have for that type of technology and how we use them. Um, but, you know, they're moving towards that. So what's going to happen when our phones basically take care of everything for us? We're going to be lazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously there's, there's uh, benefits to delegating, you know, the appointment settings, making meetings setting up meetings, uh, reminders, and all this other stuff, right? Um, <laughs> no, it's helpful. Helpful. Yeah. I mean, I, you, you, the thing that, I mean, you could be like, I have an appointment at 5 o'clock tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. And, and, I mean, it, it'll, it'll put it on there. but And remind you. But there's other things. Like, I mean, what happens when it gets to the point where um, you can tell CD, you know, find, <laughs> find reports of, I don't know, the Internet of Things for me. Then CD goes off and starts searching for shit on Google and gives you the results, right? Will you believe all that res initial result? I think eventually... Because you know research takes time. I mean, research and, and you know, finding good stuff takes time. Even though Google positions it, I mean, really, Google's not the only source. There's other ways to get information. And that's one of the problems that I have with these things, people relying on them too much. Whenever I... Whenever I, I read something, I look for it in other websites. Like, I mean, yeah. it, it has to make sense with, like, five other websites. If not, if, if there's a possibility it's not true. Yeah. That's what it, but a lot of people are, like, they see a stupid post on Facebook. And Facebook thinks that's and they they just it. Yeah. Post it and, oh, my God, we're going to World War Three or shit like that. I'm mean, like, oh, my God, I'm follow. Immediately I'm follow because I don't want to deal with people like that. It, it, and that's, like, the majority of people, the, the, the populace. And that's the, true. The, the, the populace is stupid, and we give them a lot of a lot of power. Yeah. So yeah. See, and this this takes us to um to the topic of algorithms, because um what you're talking about Facebook is basically an algorithm. Um, sure, it has. So the basically the way it works for Facebook is the the newsfeed is controlled by an algorithm, but it's also controlled by humans. Not too many. But anytime you, you like something, you comment on something, you know, Facebook decides that that's something you're potentially going to like next time that it, if it appears from that person, right? So it creates relationships. You can actually go on Facebook and see how they, how they scan you. <laughs> it's ridiculous they have this open, but people can go in there and see, you know, how they, how they determine stuff from you. But the point is that, um, see, this is, a, I use Facebook, but I only, I only, I only use Messenger. I don't, it's been... Maybe four years since I've gone into the newsfeed or my newsfeed. Yeah. And that's because not because I'm an asshole, it's because it's just crap, right? And most of the people I have on Facebook, I already know them. So what what else can I <laughs> I mean I already I already know who they are, how they think, all this stuff. So, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know what Facebook is doing, so for, for therefore I have, I have no interest in going into Facebook and, you know, seeing more articles reposted by dumb people basically the same fucking article yeah you already you already watched the news you know what happened yeah and so yeah. um <laughs> that's one i think that's one of the reasons that that twitter doesn't work for most people because it it doesn't have that component of mindless efficiency you literally got to build it that's one of the reasons i think it works for me because i took the time to build on it and you know it's it's well, I, I want to get into strategic stuff, what, what Twitter's trying to do, but um, the point is that mindless efficiency is, is going to be very pre predominant in the future. Well, it already is, but we have to be, we're not going to eliminate it, <laughs> but I think we have to become more aware of how stupid it makes us or makes others. <laughs> I I'm not going to include myself in that. 
No, I mean, I think eventually some kind of technology is going to appeal to us and it's going to yeah. calm us down a little bit. See, see, and I've been thinking about these things myself because um, everybody has a general use case and how to use technology more efficiently. But then you, in, if you go specifically to certain people, some of us have very specific use cases is how we use it. For example, I wrote a blog. Um, I would love it if there was something that read my mind and then write, wrote it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Me too. I, I would love it. That. I would love it. But then I go back to it and say, fuck. But then it eliminates my, because I know what writing makes for me, does for me. It makes me think about it as I'm writing it. So I'm thinking, how would that affect my, my, you know, my, my editing, my decision and, and, and letting some things go or, or not in there. You see, you see what I mean? But and and it becomes like this like, and never ending thing. So I, I think, you know, the other one is just driving, you know, talking to the thing, and the thing just records whatever you're saying. So there are many ways to deal with this. But at the end of the day, I mean, um, you know, we were we were talking about this in another in another podcast. Um, you know, what happens when computers eliminate our jobs? You know, so what are we gonna do? What we're we gonna end up doing? What do humans do? Which is create, connect, talk, collaborate, stuff like that. And, uh, and that's not efficient. <laughs> it's messy. Yeah. It's messy. Um, so we, we have to embrace the messiness. We have to embrace it. Because most of, I mean, going back to wishful thinking, you know, that's efficiency. <laughs> that's really what it is at the end of the day. These people want to be efficient. They don't want to mess. They don't want to get into the mess. They don't want to get their hands dirty. <laughs> You yeah. want everything easy. Therefore, therefore, they don't think. So, mindless efficiency. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm all for the, for having things done for you that are, well, easy or automated. Yeah. But, I, uh, I only do them if I know how to do it without being automated or easy per se. So, <laughs> going into editing. I know how to do like a lot of the original uh, effects, like uh, let's say flash frame or a transition with a flash frame and all that stuff. And right now in Final Cut X, I think there's like a lot of presets that you can just drag and drop and they do wondrous things. But when it comes down to, hey, I need to do this manually, how do I do it? Well, I don't know, I never figure it out. So if, if and it goes back to like a, my grandfather's way of thinking is that you need to know how to do everything so you can one day tell people how to do stuff. So if, if, and that, the go, go duck thing, uh, that it's there's the fucking gimmick. Yeah. It's just a fucking gimmick. It's not like, Oh yeah, I know how to walk so I can use this because it makes, no, walking gimmick. is good for you. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess now, with evolution. Don't now mess has, with... has your, has your uh, daughter asked you for one of those? Yeah, she did want one of those. But she she doesn't even know how to write it, you know? She she, she wants everything, so... Yeah, yeah, she's a yeah, kid. Yeah, she's a kid, so she wants everything because <laughs> one of her friends is selling selling them. And she 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 actually got on it. I was holding her hands. I, my wife and I, we were holding her hands. And she got the hang of it faster than my wife because she also got on it. And my daughter got the hang of it faster. But, I mean, it's, it's where is she going to use it? She, and I, I don't know. It's just I don't think there's a, a use for it. It's just just like a fun thing to do once in a while. Yeah. I'd rather buy a board game or something like that that you could use way more. You can use it anywhere you want. And but there's 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 a few things that technology wise that I think they're just useless. Even if it's like wow, so much technology. Yeah, I mean it's just um. Oh my god! I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's it's a it's a it's a long topic. I think we're gonna have to do a podcast just on like mindless efficiency. <laughs> yeah. In, in next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's gonna be. It ha we have to do it because it's a long topic. We could just talk about that for for a, for a while. Um, what else do we have? Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um. All right. So. So that's it. Um, we have the the topic of waiting, or the idea of waiting should die. 
uh, wishful thinking, mindless efficiency, and the idea of making it. So if you guys have any other ideas, you know, let us know. Send us send us a tweet on at Jorge Varva and Adrian Pedrin, or just to leave a comment on this podcast uh, via SoundCloud or my blog, or uh, you know. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, next week, what we'll discuss next week. Um, I think I you know I was thinking about what we'll discuss next week, kind of like the end of the year. I thought we maybe we should you know continue on not do part three of this, but do like a um, if we were to write a magazine cover. You know what are the top stories that would be relevant oh, in two thousand in two thousand sixteen? Okay, yeah, that sounds fun. So like to, like anticipating what's going to be relevant. Oh so, that, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. So let's let's do that then. All right, guys. So we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. Oh, ha- Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to say Happy Holidays. Fuck that <laughs> shit. <laughs> see, you, see you later, guys. Bye.